And we're going to take this opportunity and welcome back Kyle Floyd here of Vox Royalty with a huge announcement here. Uh, the company is firing away on all cylinders and it is just everything we can do to keep up with the progress of this high growth third party royalty company. And it has everything to do with investors favorite word, and that is dividend. But I want to welcome Kyle back to the Independent Investor Channel and have him discuss the particulars surrounding that big announcement in the company. Kyle, take it away. Well, thanks, Ryan. Always a pleasure to be with you and thank you for the opportunity. Vox has consistently demonstrated that we can find really, really great royalties um, in all the places that people would least expect. And we've built a business model around finding value for investors. And so we have continually demonstrated our ability to find royalties pre-production, in production, and across that spectrum at great value. And this announcement that we made last week about our dividend is just a furtherance of the development of this business. It's focus around investors, making sure that investors uh, also see the benefits of what we are producing at the company level. And it's really just a product of us and, and the company building a systematic advantage in an industry that has really yet to have a company go and focus on creating competitive advantages, creating intellectual property, um, that enable it to find the value that we're able to find in the third party royalty uh, landscape. And the dividend is just the, the furtherance of our capability and the demonstration that we're focused on our investors, we're focused on returns, we're focused on finding value so that investors can find a home to invest in commodities that is going to respect them as shareholders, that's going to deliver the returns that they, would, that they should expect um, and continue to execute in a disciplined fashion. And so the dividend is just reinforcing all of those key pillars uh, and the foundations of Vox. Now, Kyle, this dividend that you've declared here is a one cent per share, right? It puts the annual yield at what, 1.8%. Uh, where does that place you in the who's who of your competitors uh, in the royalty space? Um, and this information is actually uh, told in the investor presentation on voxroyalty.com. Um, but I want you to elaborate a little bit on kind of where this puts you uh, in context of your competition out there that also uh, offers that uh, dividend yield. Yeah. And Ryan, what's really exciting about this is when we had discussed this going back months ago about how we're focused on generating returns for investors, we were going to look at how we started to return some of the excess capital that we're generating back to our shareholders. And so this 1.8% yield is very significant. We think it's meaningful. We believe that it's sustainable and we expect if we continue to execute that it, it will be growing. And when you put that in comparison to a lot of our peers, they're, as you can see from our latest investor presentation, they're much larger companies and we are in the range, if not in the top quartile in terms of the, the precious metals weighted royalty companies and the dividends that they're offering. So we're excited about where we are in terms of the landscape of our peers and what peers are offering. But ultimately, it's really about what we think we can and believe that we're going to continue generating as a company, which is a very sustainable free cash flow and one that's capable of supporting a growing dividend. And so that's the expectation internally. That's what we expect to deliver. And the reason for that, um, you know, what we believe is, is a very meaningful dividend and the capacity to hopefully expand that is that we have been able to find royalties pre-production that are now coming online and growing into very meaningful producing assets, also complemented by royalties over assets that we picked up um, that have be gone into production and now are expanding their production capacity. And so these are kind of the core tenants that you and I now have, have spoken about on your program multiple times. And you know, the dividend in that context is this is just the evidence that we continue to find these great royalties with our mining geologists and our mining engineers on the front line. And we're bringing those assets into the portfolio at very good valuations. And then in turn, being able to deliver those returns to our shareholders. Yeah, I think um, you guys are right there at the top. Um, you guys are tops in my mind in the space. I cover the space intimately. Um, I'm a big proponent of Vox Royalty and those videos that have been released through the evolution of the independent investor, I'm going to leave links to those because it's Im it's imperative that anybody that's interested in the space and with the current volatility in the market, guys, you need to pay attention to this stuff. And I, I'd like Kyle to kind of get into uh, with the volatility in the markets and how royalty companies have fared over the last 10 years. 
uh, through bull markets in the S&P 500. I think it's going to be interesting to track at least Fox Royalty's progress over the coming years. But what is to expect over the next decade in the royalty business as a whole with what we're dealing with right now, unprecedented volatility in markets? How does Vox Royalty provide some level of insulation to would-be investors, Kyle? Yeah, Ryan, I mean, I think Vox is a really interesting investment story and opportunity with where we sit today, both in terms of what Vox is delivering and what the macro environment is and, and that backdrop. And so I think it's worth reminding everyone that's watching because we're a royalty company and our, our fundamental interests, they're called NSRs, net smelter returns royalties. And what those are, are basically one to 2% usually percent on the top line revenue that's generated by a mining operation. And the great thing about that is we get the benefit of all the capital that mining companies spend, whether it's for expansion, increasing resources and reserves, you name it, all the areas where they're out there investing to increase the size, scale and scope of their business and ultimately the cash flow profile of the business we get a percentage of that without having to contribute any of those costs. And so an inflationary environment that we all see and feel as consumers and businesses, Vox is a really unique business in that because it's a top line revenue percentage and we don't contribute any of the capital to the expenditures that mining companies need to make, those input cost inflations, the capital expenditure cost inflation, that does not affect us. So our top line revenue is insulated from those increased costs that, are, that the mining companies are feeling and what's contracting their margins. What we are benefiting from is, to be honest with you, a very sustained buoyancy in metal prices. And we're seeing that and you're seeing it very specifically within our portfolio where a lot of assets are going undergoing expansions. Janet Ivy and our Venduli North royalty is, you know, uh, I would say a, a case study in that where we bought the royalty it was essentially go, going back into production, but it was around a much expanded uh, production case. And that's because metal prices have been sustained at a very high level. The Juan Muda producing iron ore royalty, we bought that at four to five million tons per annum run rate in terms of production. Now that's going up to potentially double that number or maybe even more. So we're seeing that consistently within the portfolio where we are getting the benefits of a very high sustained metal price without the drag from inflation. And then when you overlay what Vox is doing fundamentally, yes, it's a very volatile market, Ryan. I mean, I think we're all feeling that, seeing that um, investors have been beaten up uh, really across the board in almost any asset class except for the dollar. Um, and so where Vox sits with paying a dividend, where you can look at our investor presentation, when you stack up the comps, we believe that we're the cheapest royalty company out there from a relative valuation perspective as well. That is lowering the volatility um, in general with yeah. what the share price is doing. I mean, we've been one of the better performers. That being said, being flat in is never necessarily a victory lap, but our volatility is low. And I think that's a unique, it's a unique position for investors to be in where you've got really explosive upside in Vox with what we're generating and the development stage assets that we have. But being one of the cheaper royalty companies out there on a relative valuation basis means you're not exposed to excessive promotion premiums and um, you know really inflated yeah. asset values. So I think we're a great place to be for investing capital, especially at this point in time where we continue to deliver the upside to investors, but with where we're trading and the relative valuations and the dividend, I think we present a unique opportunity to weather the storm as well. You do. You've unpacked a ton there, Kyle. I just want to talk about, you said you think you are undervalued. You know you are. I mean, let's just speak facts to facts. You guys are sitting at about 0.6. You guys have lost a little bit on the NAV, which is incredible because your your revenues have, have increased. And I think remaining flat in this market, I think you're to be commended. And I think to put it into context for investors, I think you need to compare uh, the stock performance of some of the competitors in the space and, and, and Vox, just like any other company, has not been immune to just the headwind that has been delivered in the stock market. I mean, the baby's being thrown out right now with every company, irrespective of really what they're doing. Kyle, I digress. If I'm a stock, I, I'm interested in the commodity space and, and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the Vox royalty story. Do I have to understand everything there is to know about the junior mining space? Do I need to understand everything there is to know about the royalty space, which is pretty complex? Or is there some value there to be had with scrutinizing the management? I think Box Royalty is right up there with the best of them, and I think you would agree with that. Um, 
How is it that I can take some solace in becoming um, an interested party uh, in the royalty space specifically and, and understanding that you guys are kind of doing the legwork for me as a would-be investor? No, Ryan, you're absolutely right. I mean, Vox was created for investors. That was the impetus and the motivation and the genesis of this business was to be there for investors that aren't mining engineers. You're not geo you're not a geologist. You maybe haven't been investing in the space through three cycles and, and three decades. The commodity space is, is unique, I think, within the general industries um, in the equity markets. And that is very complex. It's an esoteric industry with esoteric risks. Um, and also, you know, unique upsides as well. And what I would take solace in as an investor is when I looked at the landscape of how to invest in commodities, when you looked at the returns, the empirical evidence and the empirical returns of royalties as just their own asset class, they have outperformed any relative commodity benchmark by magnitudes. That's the pure asset being a royalty. Then you overlay that the, the, the larger royalty companies have outperformed the GDXJ, they've outperformed the physical, they've outperformed pretty, again, any commodity based benchmark you compare them to, Franco Nevada has outperformed the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. And they've done that because they find, they've found the right royalties and leveraged around that. And that's what Vox does. But on top of that, where I think we're different than most of the junior sector in the royalty, in the royalty space, is that we have a team of mining engineers and geologists on the front lines of our business. Um, as a former investment banker, I think I get, I'm entitled to disparage the industry a little bit. It's not bankers no. doing deals for the sake of deals and scale for the sake of scale. This is our technical team understanding the risks, understanding the upside, and overlaying that to find the best value in what we believe is by far and away the best asset class, which is owning royalties. A lot of your viewers would have seen this success in the oil and gas space. The royalty world in oil and gas has also done very well. And it's because that unique position that royalties hold, which is it's more secure. They typically run with the land. So in up cycles and down cycles, you know, you still typically have your interest in the revenue generating capability. So you, it's more secure than equity. It's not diluted like equity. And you get all the benefits of the investment that the equity holders are making that hold these mining companies for growth without having to contribute any capital to it. So these assets have well performed. We do the right kind of diligence. We do the right kind of work. And underlying all of that is the most significant competitive advantage in the industry with our royalty database. So when you put all of that together, that's why you know, we are obviously so bullish and positive on the prospects of our business and our ability to keep finding value and creating value for our shareholders. Well, let me drill down on that point. Would you suggest that Vox Royalty is about as strong as it's ever been in its history? And I, I want to follow on with an idea that what is keeping some of these large institutions to the side uh, and looking at this value proposition, look, I'm just a small fry on YouTube, Kyle, right? And, but I look at these fundamentals that you guys boast, and, and they are incredible. And it's it's not going to last forever. <laughs> this flat stock price is not, I think, the, uh, the fair market that they've got for you guys with the analysts that cover the stock. Have you guys just shy of $5 CAD? Um, with right now, I think the last U.S. stock price, which is what I track it in, was had you at about two fourteen. Is are they just remaining on the side, or can you speak about any type of institutional uh, interest in this company from the commodities perspective? Looking at your companies and saying something's got to give here. This is this is getting getting kind of ridiculous. Well, what I would say is we are starting to see that. And a lot of it is, you know, we haven't been around for very long as a publicly traded business. We were a private right. go, very heads down, doing what we were doing, focused on finding value, building our competitive advantages in the royalty sector and doing that very successfully. We've only been public for two and a half years. And really you and I on, you know, on the air together, we've talked about what was coming for Vox and how that projected out. And we've delivered on that. The reality is the last, nine months have been the most explosive growth for our firm that we've ever realized. And the yeah. next nine months continue on that trajectory, but that's overlaying with what has been for the last nine months, uh, I would, I would say a, a very significant bear market. So the yeah. success that we're bringing to the table um, has largely been kind of lost in the noise of a very, very bad equity market. So, but you started to see a lot of stabilization in our share price. Most of the peers are, you know, while we're still undervalued, most of those peers saw very, very significant contractions in their share Indeed. price. So I think we're really well positioned. We're seeing the investor appetite and the large institutional appetite uh, certainly increase. 
We've had some of the large institutions we've seen from their filings that they've made. Um, I won't name them, but they've increased their positions in us recently. And, you know, we're about to embark on a two week roadshow in Europe, speaking to many of the who's who and, and some of the most notorious and successful um, both general investors and commodity focused investors uh, on the planet. So I'm really excited about what we have in front of us. We've been out in front of a lot of the institutional investment community over the last few weeks and will continue to be for the next few weeks. Purely non-deal, we're just generating the awareness on Vox because what we believe we're doing is special and it is generating returns that I think investors should be aware of. It is. It's incredible. I want to share a link with my investor audience as well. The Emerging Growth Conference, Kyle, you spoke at it a couple of weeks ago. I thought that was a phenomenal breakdown. I'm going to share that link to our would-be investors as well uh, for the sake of transparency. Um, let's drill down a little bit on the performing assets right now currently sits at six. You guys are looking to project moving out of 2023 with over 10. Can you just talk a little bit about your organic pipeline and what that means to the Vox royalty portfolio and the opportunity that it could present right now with this prolonged opportunity? I'm just going to tell it for what it is. I mean, this flat stock price is just prolonging the opportunity uh, for you guys to realize and walk this road along your organic pipeline. Can you speak a little bit about that, Kyle? Yeah. And so from a, from a internal Vox perspective, what we look at is clearly those revenue interests. So when we start collecting checks from mining companies, that's what's generating the revenue. And so it's really that crystallization of assets going into production and also assets expanding once they're already in production and in the portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the, the Vox presentation and you look at the chart of producing asset count. So we went public, Ryan, in May of 2020. We said, this is what's coming. Investors, uh, especially in small cap world, which is where we live for better or worse right now, um, you know, it's very much a show me and then I'll value it. And so what we did is we said we're going to have this five, six producing assets that we do now. We've done that. We've actually exceeded our expectations and that's been delivered. And then, as you point out, we believe that we're going to be in double digit producing asset count as we exit 2023. Most of those assets are already in construction or have just entered production. And so we feel really good about those assets coming online and generating meaningful revenue for box shareholders. And so that's that's where you see the growth. Our capability in finding those assets one, two, three years out from production, having those actually crystallize, come into production, and then ultimately, you know, hopefully as well, expand production within the portfolio. That's what's generating this outsized growth. We're not going out and paying exorbitant values for in-production assets and hoping that we get our money back. We're finding really, really deep value on assets that you know have performed generally better than expected within the portfolio. And investors are certainly benefiting from that. So really excited about the trajectory of the business. That's what supports our, um, obviously our, our confidence in coming out with a very meaningful dividend and it being sustainable. And also what we would expect would be a growing dividend as well. I don't think being in public markets for two years, you would have anticipated offering a 1.8 annualized dividend this this soon in the game. I, that's impressive. I, I was very surprised to read the news release when you guys announced it, and I thought, what a what a power statement you guys are making. Because what surprises me is the fundamentals that you guys do boast within a company. Fundamentals are there, Kyle. But on the flip side, you guys, and I don't mean any offense by this, you guys are fairly conservative operators. And in other words, you guys trust the process that you guys go through to scrutinize royalties. And it, it has to go through some rigor before it's introduced into the Vox royalty uh, portfolio. And I, I commend you guys for it. So if you want to speak a little bit on that, but also speak about, I, I think right now you guys are at the precipice of needing uh, needing an uplisting. Um, is there any possibility of looking at uh, any time in the foreseeable future or potential of getting the visibility? Because you guys have got the fundamentals to boast, but a NASDAQ listing would really provide you guys and, and blow open the doors to transparency, which I think is the key pedigree to what you guys need right now. Yeah, look, absolutely agree. I think we were always built. The, the problem that we were solving for investors was you know, there it's it's very difficult to get your hands around the right type of exposures in the commodity sector and the commodities equity markets. And that was why the company was created. And so we've seen very good uptake with some of the very sophisticated mining investors out there. But that was truly never who 
Vox was created for. Um, it's great that they see the value of what we're doing and, and we're thrilled and appreciate their support as shareholders. But it's really for you know audiences like yours, Ryan, that want the commodity exposure, but need to find it in, in the right ways. And so we did, we filed a 40F to be listed on NASDAQ that was back um, late June. And mm -hmm. we're in that process uh, with the SEC in terms of just addressing some comments they have. It's, it's you know, it's a yeah. usual process to go it's through. Common. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we're expecting we could be on the NASDAQ in what I would say is just the near future. Um, we certainly believe we qualify in kind of every material respect. So it's a matter of just going through that process. But I agree with you. That's going to open up the investor awareness around us. It's, you know, the NASDAQ is a very liquid exchange. And that's probably some of what's held us back is that we've been somewhat closely held. There haven't been a lot of shareholders that wanted to sell um, and we've been really new to the public markets and, and generating that investor work. So I agree with you. I think the NASDAQ is going to be a very, very big milestone for us. I'm very excited about that. I think that's coming in the near future. Um, but, you know, we continue to find ways to build value um, at, at around really good assets. And that's what it's about. When you look at the outperformance of companies in this sector, it's can you get a royalty over good assets? And we turned down, you know, you talked about the discipline that we employ for the benefit of our shareholders. I'll tell you right now, we have more deal flow than anybody in this industry. We turn more deals down as a, as a result of that than anybody in this industry. We get to be very, very picky on what we bring into our portfolio. It's got to be good assets with great prospects where we understand the risk, we understand the upside, and then those brought in at very good value for our shareholders. And we consistently perform on those metrics. Um, and so when you look at where the business is in terms of the strength of the business, the fundamentals are as strong as they've ever been. Our pipeline is as strong as it's ever been. And, you know, despite very challenging markets, you know, I believe that we're a company that's built so much value that's not represented in the share price. Going back, flashback to May of 2020 when we went public, we actually went public at a slight premium to NAV. That's common mm -hmm. in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, Nevada, the, the biggest company in the industry trades at north of two times NPV or NA, NAV traditionally. Yeah. So that was normal. What isn't normal is that we have added so much net asset value per share and cash flow per share. And we're trading at, you know, about flat stock price to down stock price from where we were at that point in time with a dividend, with an inflection point in terms of the cash flow that we're generating for our shareholders. So I, I find it very difficult to argue um, for any reason of why we'd be valued the way that we are. I think there's a tremendous amount of upside and a tremendous amount of strength and upswelling in our business. Yeah, agreed. And just for complete transparency here, I want to invite everybody uh, to visit voxroyalty.com. I'm going to share that in the description below, as well as the previous interviews with Kyle. Kyle's one of the most uh, forward CEOs that I talk with, and it is absolutely appreciated. You heard it here first. Um, he does this for you guys. And if you're lucky enough to catch this corner of social media, uh, talking about a company, Vox Royalty, man, it absolutely is my honor. Uh, to pay forward this opportunity because what they're doing behind uh, behind closed doors, making these deals the way that they do um, is, is absolutely incredible. And their story needs to be told. And we're glad to do it. Kyle, I'll round it out and I'll defer back to you for anything you think we've missed here. Any updates on the portfolio that you've got? Any announcements, anything looming that we should be aware of uh, to keep our eye on um, as we track this Fox Royalty store going forward? Well, we touched on the NASDAQ listing. I sincerely believe that that's going to be a very big catalyst for us. It is kind of what I would say is connecting the dots and bringing us full circle in yeah. terms of what this company was created to be and the problems that it was created to solve. And so I'm really excited about that. Overlay that with just the, the burgeoning successful performance of assets within our portfolio that should continue to show what's being generated quarter over quarter over quarter. So I get more excited every time we get close to a quarter end for what we're going to be able to show investors in terms of yeah. our, our financial performance and those fundamentals that we've talked about. So I'm really excited where our business is. I understand for investors this is a very difficult investment climate to be in. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are certain companies and, and certain opportunities that I think stand out uh, and, and, you know, frankly, should be very well considered uh, during this this specific time and, and backdrop that we have. And I think Vox stands out in terms of, in, you know, the kind of opportunity where investors can be comfortable with their where they're putting money and what the prospects 
um, of the returns are for a company like us. So it's always an absolute pleasure uh, to be with you, Ryan. We're excited about how the business is positioned. We have both the fundamental catalyst, NASDAQ listing coming, what we believe is in the near future, and, uh, and couldn't be more pleased with how the business is performing. My charge for anybody that's catching this interview, spend a few moments. It'll cost you nothing other than time to educate yourself up on the Vox royalty opportunity. Guys, you heard it here first from the boss himself, Mr. Kyle Floyd, CEO Vox royalty. Thank you so much for your time, Kyle, and good luck uh, in, in uh, all, all things in the future as we track this uh, story going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Always a privilege. You got it.